Previously on Drake Paragon. Goodbye, Karatak. Thank you for your forgiveness for pronouncing your name wrong. Hope to be back someday. Little iceberg off the port side. No problemo. See them every day up here. Hi, everybody. I know I haven't been doing uh, much of the Drake talking into the camera video journaling thing. It's just, it's been a little different for me on this voyage as compared to when I was sailing on Fiona or Fellowship or Bella Luna in that this time it's my boat and the captain and ultimately responsible for uh, everything as I've been so preoccupied with all of that. I've had less chance to actually talk into the camera. We just pushed off from Karaktak, the largest town in southwest Greenland. Check out the iceberg right on our port side. See that? They're so beautiful. And they're just floating around. Sometimes they come into the harbors and that can be a bit of a nuisance. They hit the boats on mooring balls and need to be fended off. Sometimes they use boats to push them out of the harbor again. We are far behind schedule, which concerns me greatly. With the change in the weather, the change in the wind, with the seasonal change, I'm concerned about our sail from Iceland to Kinsale worried about getting trapped in a strong low as they blow frequently towards the end of September. We're behind schedule and yet still instead of pushing straight on we are going to take one more day just to go to this deserted island about 50 nautical miles away from Karaktak further south. It's a little bit more inland, so it's not on the direct course south towards Prince Christian Sound, but I think it will be well worth it because it's a very small deserted island with a couple of natural hot spring pools. And I mean natural, nothing man-made about them. Uh, with this, reportedly with a sandy bottom and uh, the perfect place to bathe in the hot water, which is perfect temperature. So we here, we're gonna find out. You can see right over here, this this is something you see in Greenland all the time on the mountaintops. It's a pile of rocks put up there a very long time ago to mark this island for some reason, like maybe it's an anchorage, maybe there's a settlement. I don't really know, but we see a lot of them. Greenland is all mountain. It's all rock. Rock covered with moss. And uh, the further south we are in Greenland, it seems the more vegetation there is, even trees are growing in the southernmost parts. Uh, whereas further north, like in Tamut, it's pretty much strictly moss. Everybody has a powerboat around here, like this guy going by us. Uh, I think maybe 
it's as common for people to have a little power boat like that as it is for them to have a car. And in some places, like Arsuk, where nobody has a car because it's just too small and there'd be nowhere to drive, people have boats like that. So a lot of the towns are not connected to other towns by roads. There's nothing but these big rock mountains in between the towns. Wow, four icebergs ahead. So to get from one town to another, you need to take a boat of some kind, and uh, most people have a little power boat like that, you know, four person, six person capacity with a small enclosed cabin. And it's either that or a helicopter or plane. We've learned that a lot of people really like the capital in the north called Nook, where they have the largest population in Greenland. A lot of families end up with their kids going to Nook to work or to go to school. And then when uh, vacation comes, they hop on a little boat and zoom back home for vacation. The scenery is breathtakingly beautiful and I really love Greenland. I'm so glad we came here. I had no idea what this place was like. I really just had no idea. I read small amounts about... I gotta navigate, hold on. We are now turning to starboard. I'll show you our route. We're there in Karaka. We're gonna go this windy, windy course over to the hot springs right there. Hi, I'm getting on course. We won't be doing any sailing. It's just too congested with rocks and small fjords that we can barely fit through. There's one fjord that we're, where we're gonna squeak through a couple of islands. Um, and according to the chart, it's like 66 feet from one island to the next. So. Uh, we're going to be really careful when we get there, and if there's any any issue, we're, uh, we still have enough time to turn around, backtrack, and uh, take a, a much longer route to get to Unata. Originally, when I planned our route to get there, this was the path that I took, steering us well clear of islands, but I talked to somebody who's familiar with these waters and he recommended this much, much shorter route. So we're gonna try it out. It's a beautiful sunny day. There's very little wind. We might try flying Harry from the boat if, uh, if we find a really scenic area to do that. I, I really wanna fly the quadcopter through an arch. We've seen so many gigantic icebergs with arches, you know, like a big hole going right through the middle. If I could get some quadcopter footage of that, I think it would be maybe the first aerial fly through an arch footage ever filmed. Ever? Only on Drake Paragon. We'll see what happens next. Thank you for sailing with us. We have 55 miles to go.
200. So, I was going to say, what was your, uh, what was one of your favorite things about Karakta? Like, you had a couple of experiences there. What did you really like? I really liked that happy guy that worked at the uh, at the metal shop who like looked at my problem and he was like, yeah, no problem. And he didn't really speak English that well, but he was really happy and laughing a lot and and uh, and he let me watch him yeah. as he was doing the welding and the and the cutting and and uh, and I was filming him and at one point he looked at the camera. And I was like, oh, maybe he doesn't like the camera. So I put it down, and then he smiled and said, no, no, film me, <laughs> photo. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, he was nice. Do you realize what? that we were there in Kotok for 12 days? 12 days? Wow. Almost as long as we're in the year. I would much rather spend two weeks in one place and two weeks in another place than one week each in four places. You know, I'd rather really spend a week at the hot springs. We're only going to spend a day at the hot springs. But, you know, I'd much rather stay in a place for, you know, two to three weeks instead of just one week. Because by the end of one week, you're just starting to make friends. You know, they're just starting to get used to you and, uh, Two to three weeks, I think, is much better to absorb the, you know, the culture and make friends. And a lot of other boats, I think, they just uh, they're always in a hurry to get to the next place. And and you know, maybe they have limited time. But uh, even so, I would rather spend the time in one place and really get to know it very well and, and the people there really well rather than um, get to know a whole bunch of places but just a little bit and just, you know, scratch the surface. The biggest example that, of that, I think, is the, the cruise ship people who go to 20 different ports on their cruise, spend about, you know, an hour or two in each port. They, they get brought ashore, they walk around, and they go back to the big ship, and really, the, I think that the people that they meet and get to know are, are on the ship rather than uh, in the places that they visit. We weren't in Bamut or Karakak long enough for me to feel that it was like home. Um, if you spend three months in a place or six months in a place, then, then you get to know it really well and uh, it sort of becomes home. This is the entranceway through one of the fjords. 
apparently 15 to 20 knots on the nose so it gets funneled down through this tunnel it's relatively narrow but it's very easily gotten through nearly like as wide as the mouth of a harbour so we are fine you can see here the navigation marks so some of the bigger boats come through here some of the fishing boats but it's all very green around here so it's, it's, uh, it's very pretty I was like, hey, and they saw the camera and they were like, they all started waving like crazy. <laughs> That's really cool. 40 feet depth, four and a half knots overground, a little slower. The fjords of Greenland. Oh my god, what's that over there? Oh my god, it's ice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, one month in Greenland and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of us, all of us. That would have been one of your highlights of the trip, though. I mean, let's just say Crocker Top. Crocker top. What would have been one of your highlights for Crocker Top? Actually, I think it was seeing that Earth House. That was really cool. It was actually really amazing also because it wasn't like you just went in and it was roped off and like, and like, like I was just in there like I could pick up the boots and these seal skin boots and bags and these old spoons and like open up all the boxes. That was really cool. I liked that. You liked that? Yeah. Anything else that you liked when you were there? No, that was it. Any other experiences? People you met? No, nothing. Nothing. Just the house. Just the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it was cool to meet all the people from Avalanche. And the Swedish boat as well. We might actually walk into them down here. Because they said they were going to go to the fjords. But then they were going to go to the hot springs as well. I think they're gone. I think so. They have to get to Norway. I think by the end of August. Yeah. That's it, yeah, that's a trick. Yeah, meeting the people was actually really cool. I thought I would enjoy the larger town more. I don't know if I did though. Like, yeah. There was definitely more to see and more roads to explore and things like that, but I kind of preferred my views a little bit more. There were so many people coming in saying love for some of the boat. Nice people. I remember the big thing when we first got in there was was we gotta fix the boom, we gotta fix the boom, and we gotta then I think you were you would realize the pin was loose on the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So there was the pin on the gym, there was the boom, we need to pay for provision, we needed to check into them. And did you ever put the little pin back in? Of course. You mean at the top of the map? No, at the bottom. What do you mean at the bottom? The cotter pin? At the bottom of the head stake, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, no, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say it to that. Did you put that pin in? Of course I did! Oh, God! Yeah. 11 knots on the nose, and there goes the head sail. I think it's interesting that it was a little harder to find cotter in the larger city than it was in the small one. Yeah, until we found it. Until it's we like finished, right like, there. right there. <laughs> 25 feet right here with lots of rocks on our port side. Urgh. Tired? Yeah. I'm a little tired. We didn't sleep well last night. I don't know why. I didn't have any caffeine. Maybe it was just knowing that we we're pushing off in the morning and my brain running through everything that I, you know running through the list of things that needs to be done before we can go anywhere. Just kept me up until pretty 
pretty late. I didn't sleep much. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah I had to go further this way to get into deeper water. I imagine it was something like that. But you're right, yeah, we we're close enough. So we've got some small birdie bits around the edge of the channel. But they're not posing any hazard to us. It's bringing us through the channel right now. Tomorrow. But it's a uh, kind of windy day. It's kind of cool. We've been in harbour for a while, so we're not used to the cold as well. 100 feet of water. Looking good. So yeah, so we're not too far away from the land. The thing here that takes getting used to is that once the land goes into the water, it tends to drop off very, very quickly. So like, these narrow, narrow passages are actually navigable, even though they look very, very tight. So we have all these little power boats going by us today. It's the main transport between the islands and the, uh, and the different harbours. So they're, they're hardy people considering they're sitting in power boats going quicker than we are. The windshield must be an absolute killer. I'm just saying that they must be freezing. up those guys. <laughs> <They're> like... <laughs> One guy went, boy, my arm is frozen. <laughs> Here is just a headland, but we have to go around. Not, not the high one. The uh, this one here. You can see how it's different here than from over here. This is actually much closer to the slopes down. But we have to go around that bit and just go in uh, in behind it. So we're going through a fjord this way. In through there is the passageway. So you can just about see it. We'll probably start to shake here now, but you can see just the tiny little in the center of the screen here now. Just there. That's where the entrance way is. It's very tight. It's pretty tight, man. Go nice and slow. According to the chart, it's really narrow. Yeah. Like so narrow that we might not be able to U-turn if we need to. Okay. So we're committed once we go in. Beautiful GPS might be a little bit mischievous. Okay, so yeah, if there was any sort of uh, big icebergs in here at all, you wouldn't be able to get through. You can see the rocks underneath the water now. It's amazing. It's, it's not the reflection there that you can actually see. Thank you. 
Star Set. This is tight navigation, all this stuff. This is how narrow it was. Going through. So you have a good bit of space on the far side, but at the narrowest point it gets very, very narrow. This place really is in the wilderness. That's a bit of uncharted. We're through! We're through! <laughs> the gods have let us pass this time today. Oh my god. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like I want to go raft up to that iceberg and chunk off some ice. <laughs> yeah. There's an anchor spot on the chart on the starboard side. I'm not sure if it's there or around the next corner. Yeah. It's worth just taking a look at as we go by. Yeah. Just in case the anchorage doesn't work out for whatever reason in uh, Una Talk.